Brothers and sisters, we're ready now to start the celebration of life for Brother Roland. As we get ready to start the celebration of life, I'm going to ask if you have a cell phone, tablet, or any other electronic device that you please put it in the silent, vibrate or off position for the remainder of the service. And then I want to remind us that we're in God's house. And I ask that you reverence it as such and that you would refrain from walking and talking as much as possible, but definitely not during the time of scripture, prayer, or eulogy. 
I am David Jefferson, and I serve as the pastor of the Peace Baptist Church here in the city, as well as chaplain here at Pi Funeral Home. And since you all have entrusted the final arrangements to us, that makes you part of our family. And I love to say to family at a time like this, as you cry, we cry. As you mourn, we mourn. But we do not mourn as those who have no hope. But those of us who know the Lord know that this is not the end, but a new beginning. Death is never a period. It's always a comma because life goes on even when these bodies can no longer afford our souls a home. Amen. Our scripture today will come from the 23rd Psalm. And I'm going to read the entire Psalm. Psalm 21 says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's pray. God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now. We turn to you now because your word says that you are the God of all comfort, and we need your comfort now. God, we turn to you because you have a peace that surpasses all understanding. We need your peace. You have a strength that can hold us up. We need your strength. God, we need your presence in this house today. God, we ask now that you would manifest yourself to us. We pray that you would speak to our very hearts, speak to our very souls, and remind us that all life comes from you and all life must return to you. Therefore, Brother Roland was alone to us. And now that he's returned to you, help us now to live out the life he taught us so that we may be honored to you and also keep his legacy alive. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, and we give you praise for it. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to have a song, and then Bree will come with the condolences as well as the obituary. Lord, I know 
you're the only one, yeah, yeah. Who is able to put me through this? So I need, I need you to talk to me. As I ask you for your guidance, especially, Lord, today. Oh, my world is so cloudy. Lord, guide me till I'm sure. As I open up my heart to you. I need you to show me how to do things your way. Oh, don't let me make the same old mistakes. But I don't want to make them over and over and over again, my Lord. Your will be done And I'll be the one The one to make sure, Lord, that it's carried out And in me I don't want no doubts So, Lord, I, I need, I need to talk to you ask you for your guidance especially this day long while my world is a little cloudy low guide me till I'm sure as I open up All I need is one word from you, Lord. It'll make all the difference in what I do. Guide me, Lord. Be the captain of my soul. Guide me, Lord. As I open up my I'm supposed to be doing saying a eulogy. Condolences. Condolences. And who? And the obituary. Okay, I need the obituary. What's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? Okay. Okay. Say so do the condolences. I don't really know what what that's supposed to mean, but this is what we gonna do. Okay, thank you. I don't, I don't see no cards. We got some cards. Okay, listen. We got cards. I'm going to wait on those cards to come up, but in the meantime, between time, I want to say this. First of all, I thank everybody for being here, for my grandfather, who I call daddy. Thank you all for being here. Now... I'm going to just speak from the heart. I'm going to let the spirit guide me. The spirit of truth, that is. I don't want to make nobody uncomfortable. But I'm going to speak truth. You know what I'm talking about? So, <sighs> my grandfather, Charles, first of all, when we walked in, me and my mother, um, we told him we ain't necessarily want no prayer, no scripture. And, and, and that ain't nothing against my family here. I know my family, the Jehovah Witnesses, are the cool. But 30 years, my nigga ain't never picked up no Bible. We, we, we burying him on some real sh sh today. You feel what I'm saying? We not doing nothing fake. 
We gonna, we gonna do it how he did it his whole life. He been here 80 years. You understand what I'm saying? He been the same person for almost 80 years. I've been knowing them 30 of them. We ain't doing shit fake today, excuse my language, but since I said I'm gonna let the spirit of truth guide me, I gotta speak naturally. And I don't mean no disrespect to the people who I respect in here, okay? Now, my granddaddy, like I said, he wasn't a religious man. He was him. He was Charles. He was loud. He was the life of the party. He was light. He was a jokester. He could be offensive sometimes, so you can't be sensitive around him. You know what I'm saying? You got to be a certain type of person to deal with him. So if you loved him, and if you went here showing your respects, you probably not weak, maybe. You feel what I'm saying? Because he was a certain type of man. You feel me? And we going to stand on that today as we send him home to be with his wife, my grandmother. We've been here before. A few of y'all ain't seen me since then. That was seven years ago, 2016, when we buried my grandma. And y'all might not see me no more after this, because my nigga dead. I ain't got a reason to really deal with too many people. This one right here. This one right here. See, let me tell you something. I always knew he was going to go. You feel what I'm saying? Because you know your parents and your grandparents ain't meant to be here forever, you feel me? But since that's my... Mm, you feel me? I'm baby Jack, you know what I'm talking about? Since that's my, I always thought that when it happened, I'd be messed up. And I messed up, I am. I thought I'd have to go to the nut house or something. I thought I'd be, that's my nigga, you feel me? But he prepared me for this. And that's what I had to tell my mama, we prepared for this. You feel me? In more ways than one. We didn't have a lot of scares. We didn't have a lot of scares because, again, he lived. You feel me? He lived. He'd been drinking his whole life. He wouldn't know. He, he'd say, this ain't no dietitian kitchen. My nigga ain't never gave up that pork. He ate what he wanted to eat. He drank what he wanted to drink. He did what he wanted to do. He hated water. You understand what I'm saying? So we had a lot of scares. So we was prepared, man. You feel me? We was prepared, right? That's why you good. That's why I'm good. That's why we good, right? Yeah. Now, another reason why we doing better than expected is because I know for a fact my nigga was ready. Tell you something about him. He ain't want to die. He ain't want to die until he was ready to die. Okay? That's why he been here for so long. And maybe that should be a lesson to us in the room. A lot of this shit is mental. You feel what I'm saying? It's all in the mind. Because he, he did what he wanted to do with his body. And he ain't go till he felt like it. And I'm okay. And I'm okay. Because I walked in. I walked in the house. And I saw my nigga sleep on the bed. He had a picture of my grandma tape to the headboard. You understand what I'm saying? He was ready to go. He ain't leave till he was ready to go. Khalid said he told him that. Now, he know better than tell me something like that. Khalid said he told him that about a couple weeks ago. He was ready, though. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm able to do better than I thought I would because I know that this is what he wanted to do. You see what I'm saying? And I didn't want, I didn't want to lead with no Bible, no scripture, none of that, because that ain't what we did. Me and him? Can't nobody tell me about me and his bond. Can't nobody tell me about me and his conversation. I know me and his, shh, hey, we gonna keep it 100 in here. You feel what I'm saying? I know what we believed in. So I'd rather open up with honesty, love, and truth because I can't believe um, some, some scripture, nothing that don't make sense that's gonna tell me that if, a, nah, hell no, nah, because I gotta know that my granddaddy is gonna be in heaven because let's just keep it 100. Y'all wanna go with that bullshit. We ain't going to, you feel what I'm saying? We ain't going to heaven. I ain't going to heaven if I believe in that. I got to be okay. I got to be okay with him. I got to be okay with his wife. I got to be okay with the rest of my loved ones. I got to be okay with everybody who he preceded in death. And in order for me to do that, 
In order for her to do that, in order for us to do that, we have to know, we got to believe that he going to live on to a better place. Because y'all sit up here, y'all do what y'all want to do all through all life, just like he did, just like I'm going to do, just like we going to do, right? Let's keep it, we going to do what we want to do, right? Never mind, I can't speak for y'all, I can speak for me, and I can speak for him. He did what he want to do, and I'm going to follow suit. I'm going to just try to be as righteous as possible. But at the end of the day, ain't none of us in here perfect. Ain't none of us in here perfect. So I'd rather believe in karma. I'd rather believe in karma. I'd rather believe that my grandfather, he ain't never let nobody go hungry. So he's going to go on to a better place. I'd rather believe that he ain't never harmed nobody ever in his life. At least not physically, so he's going to move on to a better place. I'd rather believe that he was a great father, a great grandfather. And to me, I can't even call him a granddaddy because when my mama had me, she had me at a time when he wasn't even done fathering. You understand what I'm saying? DJ really is first grandchild. That's my mother, that's my daddy. You understand what I'm saying? Stop playing with me. Let me read this obituary because I don't even want to. All truth today, right? Amen. All right. It's really not an obituary. This is biography, a little short biography. Biography of Charles Rowland. It's told by Baby Jack. Now, Charles Rowland Jr., affectionately known as Charlie Jr. to some, Charlie Brown, and Chuck to others, was born on July 14, 1943. He was the fourth child of Arquilla and Charlie Rowland. And being the final of his seven siblings to transition, Charles is literally the last of a dying breed. His childhood years were spent in southwest Detroit where he grew up on 6102 Lincoln Street, along with his brother and sisters, Joseph, Jordine, Albert, Tracy, Otis, and Penny. Charles would often reminisce on the days when he and his siblings would visit their cousins, aunts, and uncles in the Brewster's housing projects where some of his fondest childhood memories would be, would be made. As a youth, he found, his love, he found his love for dancing, skating, joking, card games, and even tasted his first drink. All things that will remain a part of his life until he was no longer able or no longer with us. Charles would graduate from Chassie High School in 1961, and according to him, he was never unemployed since. He held various jobs around Detroit and Hamtramck, Michigan, before settling at AP Bakery. And in 1965, he married Ms. Nancy May, with whom he had his first and only son, Charles Lamar, in December of 1967. Now, unfortunately for the rest of Lamar's siblings, nieces, and nephews, their union would be short-lived, ending in 1972, allowing Charles and Nancy to both move on eventually to be with their soulmates. As for Charles, he wasted no time doing just that because in that same year, he met my grandmother, my grandmother, Ms. Gertha Lee Neal, and married her after only having known each other for two months. In February of 1973, the newlyweds welcomed their first daughter into the world, my auntie, the sweet Tanisha Renee who was forced to learn how to share at an early age because 14 months later came my beloved mother. Sonia gave birth to Sonia Yvette, making their family complete, or well, so they thought. As a Budden family of four, and sometimes five with Lamar, the Rollins, plant, the Rollins planted their roots on the west side of Detroit, purchasing their first home at 18424 Evergreen Road and establishing their careers in the automotive industry. The family grew and flourished throughout the 70s until spring of 81, when the couple was, was, when the couple was surprised with the news of an unexpected pregnancy. After the shock wore off, they eventually rejoiced and began anticipating their the arrival of their baby boy, who they had planned to name Kevin. Then came a cold December, and Charles and Gertha were met with yet another surprise when Kevin was born a girl. So they named him Kimberly Nicole. 
And from those four children came 11 grandchildren. Me, Bree Rowland, Baby Jack, DJ, Buddha, Anaya, Duke, Chase, Joaquin, Kai, Azaria, Mackenzie, and Michaela. And although he will be mourned and missed by half of his children and some of his grandchildren the most, Charles was so much more than just daddy. He was a nurturing uncle. I ain't hear nothing when I said that. I said he was a nurturing uncle. Because the nieces and nephews, okay. A loving cousin, a loyal friend, and from Lincoln Street to Evergreen to Washburn, down to Westmoreland, he was a loved and trusted neighbor. On August 1st, 1998, Charles retired from General Motors after 30 years of proudly milking the clock. <laughs> he never failed to remind anyone that since he was retired and all my bills paid, that he can drink as much as he wanted and did. See, my grandfather wasn't a religious man. He was never a part of any riots or protests. He didn't have no civil rights stories to tell me. He ain't on no rocking chair, and he never voted. Nope. Because that wasn't who he was. Yeah. Charles believed in making an honest living, staying out of the way and enjoying life. To him, enjoying life meant casino trips, cold beers, tunk, poker, spades, vacation destinations, family gatherings, barbecues, cookouts, and racetracks. Charles only did what made him feel good. And no matter where he was, a good time was never far behind. Now listen, my grandfather was not an apologetic man. Hey, Joaquin. My grandfather was not an apologetic man and may have offended many with his brutal directness along the way. So for that, I apologize on his behalf to anyone who will never receive it from him. But for those who have felt his remorse, knew that his apologies did not come in form of words. Instead, you felt it through his love language of warm meals, cold drinks, snacks from the store, little gas money, and other small sentiments he used to show how he truly felt. That's big. Charles loved to cook and eat, and he would never let anyone around him go hungry. He may have played tough, but those who knew him knows that he would lend a ride and open the doors of his home to just about everybody. He was never known to hold grudges, especially against myself and his children, despite a couple of them holding some with him. And after a long, life of love and laughter, my grandfather took his last breath on Saturday, April 23rd, 2022. And now, my, now, as we send him to his final resting place, awaiting Charles, with open arms will be none other than my grandmother, Ms. Gertha Lee Rowland, who made her departure in October 2016. He was preceded in death by both parents, Charlie and Arquilla, and will finally be reunited with his sisters, Tracy, Geraldine, and Penny, his brothers, Joseph, Albert, and Otis, and nephew, Derek Rowland. And he gonna wait on me and save me a spot. And we already talked about where we going before the late people walked in, right? Now, a few lines. Dedicated to Diddy. I told y'all before we was ready. So this time I didn't ask why, because now I understand. We must release the man we love and let go of his hand. You've prepared us for this day where we lay you to rest, breaking our hearts to prove he only takes the best. Amen. Did I tell any lies? Now, I'm gonna read a couple of these cards. Then after that, 
I'm going to allow anybody who um, want to give any final remarks about my grandfather to come up here and grace the place. God, celebrate your memories, and in those memories, may you find comfort. Our loved ones are a gift to us. After they have gone, we remember and we celebrate the life they've lived, the love they shared, the difference they made in our lives, thinking of you at this difficult time. Mr. and Mrs. Eugene Etheson and family. Thank you. promises of God's comfort and hope. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son to the world so that he might live through him. John 4, 9. Thanks be to God who gives us the glory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. May God's hope Field promises bring comfort to your soul and peace to your heart with heartfelt sympathy. Love, Jerry, Kay, and family. Thank you. Now, um, this first scripture kind of reminded me of what I said regarding my grandfather as far as him not leaving until he was ready to go. And I'm going to reiterate that one more time. Because, again, a lot of this is mental. That's the only reason why I'm able to stand up here. If you're blessed enough to know me, you know that's my nigga right there. That's my everything. I didn't even think I was going to be able to do this. And I've been effed up all week. But at the end of the day, he was ready. He was ready, and he didn't leave until he wanted to because we didn't spend countless times at the hospital. <laughs> and he didn't let us know. Daddy gonna be all right. Daddy about to go home. This time, he wanted to move. So he in his new home now. And again, I'm at peace with that. Cause I know for a fact, he loved me and I loved him. Our bond was real. And like I said before, I was so much more than a grandfather, than a granddaughter. Seeing this too when I came into his life. And he accepted me when it was hard to, because this 17 year old daughter was pregnant. You understand what I'm saying? He ain't want that. His baby was having a baby. But he loved baby Jack before she got here. And I'm going to carry that with me. That's why I'm good. Because I got him in me. You know what I'm saying? I got them in me. Just like I got God in me, we all got God in us. We ain't gotta look to nobody to save us, it's in us. And I want y'all to take a page out of his book, his book of resilience and, and stubbornness. And stubbornness, meaning that, again, he did what he wanted to do until he didn't wanna do it anymore. So, at this point, at this point, I'm gonna allow anybody um, who would like to come leave their remarks or tell any type of stories for my grandfather. You ain't gotta rush, we ain't gotta do no two minute thing because this was already a quick service. Speak your hearts. 
Anybody want to get it off? Now, you know, we all can't have remarks here. There is a thing called a repass. And we're going to ask for the majority to repass. We have to leave at a certain time, though. So come remember just a few, though, just a few. Just a few. Thank you, Bree. Um, there are a lot of people here today, and that really is a testament to how much respect people have for my Uncle Charles. Charles was married to my Aunt Gertha, one of the sweetest women I've ever met in my life. And they really loved each other. Right now I want to address the, in particular, the grandchildren. It is hard to lose a parent. It is extremely hard to lose a parent. But there's something real different when you lose a grandparent. Your grandfather is your biggest hero, your wisest advisor. But I want to share with you something that I've learned in life, youngsters. He will always be there for you. When you don't know what to do, your grandfather's voice is going to tell you what to do. You're going to remember the things that he's told you, the things that he's advised you. When you're messing up, you're going to know you're messing up because of the things that you have heard him say before. And it's going to straighten you out. Always remember, your grandfather is always with you because he built in you by communicating with you, by loving you, by hugging you, by holding you. He's done so much for you. Your grandfather will always be with you. Amen. I just got to say something this because my daddy is my daddy. He's the best man that I ever been in my life. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. I love that man very much. I got his pig nose. My kids got my nose. We get that from my daddy. My daddy is the big man. He, was, he did not judge nobody. He loved everybody. If you need anything, he was always there. He, didn't, he never said no. That no was, never came out of his mouth. My daddy didn't say no. He loved everybody. He was trying to do everything for it. however. But that's like, he was a good man, a good man. But he ain't here no more, and I appreciate it, because he wasn't supposed to go nowhere. That's my daddy. He was the best man ever. But thank you all for coming. There's a lot of people. He said we got a lot of rollers, a lot of rollers. He said it's a whole bunch of us. I said, okay. But anyway, but thank you all for coming. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. He's worthy. Uh, my name is uh, Roderick McClure. My mother and I call him Charlie Jr. were first cousins because my mother's mother and Charlie Jr.'s father were brothers and sisters. And uh, my family was the family, uh, as uh, Bree read, on, uh, in the Brewsters that you know we shared and, and, and had a chance to. You know, interact with Charlie Jr. and uh, the, the whole family. Lamar, Kim, Sonia, Tanisha, children of Charlie Jr., y'all be strong as good. And what a pure, natural way that uh, Bree came unto us. And you know what? You did it in your way. And I believe, nonetheless, of, and she, she was trying to respect us or you, and nonetheless, the presence of God is here. And in it, we are all right. 
And I'd like to say about Charlie Jr. that he was, she said he wasn't religious. Maybe he wasn't religious, but he was in it because he was so pure. This is what I... I share with you that in the scripture it says God is what? Love. It didn't say God is a Jehovah's Witness. It didn't say God was, you know, Lutheran, Catholic. God is love. And nobody can say who's going to go above. You mentioned about him in a better place. So we know that something's going on in the world, isn't it, isn't it everybody? And I do believe the goodness and the pure heart that Charlie had, hey, he gives us something to put a mark for. So in it, from all my knowing him through the end of his living, I give you this scripture from the book of Revelations, which says that, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prisons. There ye may have trial and tribulation 10 days. And we know that the day of the Lord is like a thousand years. Be thou faithful, the word says, until the end in which Charlie was, and I will give them a crown of life. I will give you a crown of life. So, yes, like you said, he's in a better place, and he got a crown. And, and thank you for allowing me to speak. And from, on behalf of uh, family to family, we love. And thank you, everybody, again for coming. Mm. Giving honor to God, who is the head of my life. I come here today to speak about my brother Charles. He's not my biological brother, but I met them years ago when Tanisha was four, Sonia was three, and it goes there. From there, me, him, Gertha became the best of friends, and he used to call me Lil Sus. So my big brother over there, he was a very loving, kind, and entertaining gentleman. He loved playing his cards on Friday night. You know, that was tunk night. They played them cards, cooked that food, and they have a good time. They may stay up to 3, 4 in the morning, but they had a good time. That was their social, how they socially entertained one another. But Charles... He was very pleasant. You come over to the house, hey, what's going on? In the midst of that, what you want to eat? Whatever you want to eat, I'm going to cook it. He didn't have a problem with it. So what I want to say to his kids, Lamar, Tanisha, Sonia, Kim, and the rest of the kids, grandkids, continue to live on the legacy of your granddaddy, daddy, with love, showing love, compassion, and cooking, because that's what he enjoyed, entertaining. And brother, you'll be home soon with your wife. Amen. Hello, on, on a good note, on this blessed day, my name is Kathy Rowland, and Uncle Charles is my um, uncle also. I was married to Derek Rowland. Now, the Derek Rowland became my daughter, Octavia Rowland. And way back in the day, me and Uncle Charles used to work at the vacuum cleaning shop. And every day he would come in his vacuum cleaning shop and say, Candy, what are you doing? And I said, I'm fixing vacuums. He says, no, you have to get this to make this work. But in all reality, I got this to make Uncle Charles work and carry on a role in tradition of the family. So I'm sad and hurting my, myself also about Uncle Charles because we go way, way back before the grandkids and the little grandkids. Me, him, and Derek used to be at this vacuum cleaning shop, and I can still see us on Evergreen fixing on vacuums. And that's what I want to remember Uncle Charles by, on a good kind of positive note. Thank you. How y'all doing? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I, I, I interrupted my cousin. Come on, cousin. Go ahead. Do your thing real quick. Hey, 
y'all. Um, I'm Derek's daughter. My name is Artavia. And I didn't get to meet my dad's dad. Uncle Charles was my granddad. Um, Baby Jack, I just want to say to you and to your mama and to y'all siblings that I understand. You know, I lost my daddy many years ago. And I've been sitting in the seats that y'all sitting in. And one thing about them rolling me and they were good fathers. They were good providers. And they were whoever they were unapologetically. I remember many summers growing up on Washburn, my Uncle Charles and my daddy, if they didn't do nothing else, they was gonna drink, they was gonna argue, and he was gonna put us out with a plate. <laughs> he was gonna put us out with a plate and a kiss. And I understand that your heart hurt. My daddy been gone 12 years and I still cry and I still miss him, but y'all had a good daddy to the day he died and then some and he loved y'all and he never stopped loving y'all and when them days get hard and y'all can't find strength you just remember them good days of your daddy getting drunk and cussing y'all out and waking up the next day and I'm sorry give me what you want to eat where you want to go and y'all gonna be okay I love y'all and I am very sorry for y'all loss and I feel like Uncle Charles was like the last thing I had connected to my daddy because they were so close, you know, and I grew up in y'all house. We, we cousins, but we grew up like siblings. And I just want y'all to know that I love y'all and y'all going to be okay. Y'all have a good day. That's all. Let's try this one more time. How y'all doing? <laughs> you know, uh, you know, my sister basically said it all. Y'all all said it all. But the one thing I wanted to say one time, though, whether it was rain, sleet, snow, a hurricane, tornado, flood, he coming. The same guy that will walk in Little Caesars and eggs, is y'all oven broke? <laughs> it might be. You know, I know, you know, he, he bears the mess out of his two grandkids. Then my cousin, brother in the back, he know how that went. And uh, you feel me? Every day, whether it was from Monday to third, Friday, he used to go call and say, you see wrestling? Yeah, I saw it. You see what he did? I saw it. All right, bye. I, I love you. I love you more. And then, you know, my love for hot and ready. <laughs> That's what he was going by. <laughs> you feel me? He ain't care. And he was also my first sip of beer. I'm letting y'all know right now. Today, he going to be my last sip of beer. I love y'all. Thank y'all for coming out. Y'all are very beautiful. Shout out to that man right there. You know, not everybody had a granddaddy or a daddy, and I was blessed to have both of them. I love you, Mom. I love you, Pops. You know, both of my uncles right there, because they ain't had to be here. So I appreciate y'all for coming. I appreciate all y'all. And I appreciate this, you know, my other mama right here beside me, because she was the, that same mug waking me up in the, at night, morning, pr playing pranks. But I'm letting y'all know right now, all that, she one of the reasons why I am the way I am today. So I want you to know, no matter what me and you go through, I always love you, and I always have your back. I love you too, you know. No matter what happens between me and you, Baduk, I love you. Yeah. DJ, I love you. Anaya, I love you. Azaria, you still can't have no boyfriend, but I love you. All right. Twins, that go to you too. Joaquin, you already know what the deal is, baby. I love y'all. Peace out, Charles. We gone. Wrap that up real quick. Amen. Amen. Jaleel said wrap it up, so I'm going to wrap it up. You're a big man now. He said you should have been Charles Rowland III. Speak on it. it. Don't even look like him. No, no, wait, wait. Let me take my glasses off real quick. Let me go stand next to him. Hold on. But again... <laughs> He said it all. We've said enough. In the spirit of my brother Jaleel, um, final remarks. Daddy know what it is with me and him. He know what it is. Daddy died, walked in the room. I cleared the nurses out. I said, dress me up. You know what I'm saying? The little white lady said, you can come be with your family. I said, Bip. give me my little booties. Give me my little gloves. Let me clean my nigga up, cause y'all ain't gonna do it right. You understand what I'm saying? I had to scrub my nigga down and get him prepared 
for his final resting place. Cause he going to be with his woman, he gotta be clean. <laughs> he gotta be clean. And then the, the nurse looked at me kind of crazy. I said, all right, daddy, I'm gonna let her clean your thing for you. Cause I can't, you know what I'm saying? Can't go to your woman with your thing like that. And again, even though this is gonna be the hardest year of my life, cause I done hit him my whole life. We had to have his birthday on Monday. I mean, we had to have his funeral on Monday because I didn't want to have it on my birthday. And I never have another one with him. We good, though. Because me and my grandfather was good, and my heart aches for my cousins who didn't get to experience what we have with him. My heart aches for my auntie. My heart aches for my auntie. Mm, mm, mm. But I love you. I love you. Some shit got a motherfucking change. Some shit got to change. Let me talk about it. Let me talk about it, because I can't understand. I can't understand. And we all got our ways. Lord knows I got mine. Just like him, I have offended many with my brutal directness. However, I lead with love. I'm always love. I ain't never took from nobody. I ain't never stole from nobody. I ain't never told on nobody. And any problem I ever had with anybody, I faced it with you. I've never called nobody on you. I've never tried to get nobody else to go against you. I've never wanted to hold no grudges, Anaya. Cause I'm your big cousin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know where Lamar is, but if anybody can send me his number, I got something to say to that nigga too. My grandfather loved all his kids. And as I reflect, it's some things that my grandparents could have done differently. We could have encouraged more unity. They could have encouraged more unity among their daughters. And everything isn't our fault, everything isn't their fault. But at the end of the day, I'm an adult and I can take accountability for what I do. What's up, auntie? I could take an accountability for what I do. So I'm gonna need every other adult, not every other one. I'm really talking to my auntie, talking to my mama. I'm gonna need y'all to take accountability for all this bullshit too. I got, I got my ways, but my ways really ain't never hurt nobody. You understand what I'm saying? I don't care what type of attitude I had, my attitude ain't never did nothing to nobody. And if it did, it is what it is but I've always stood on my business. So just like I told y'all to take a page out of my grandfather's book, by living the way you wanna live and doing what makes you happy, take a page out of my book. By being a thousand, one million, by being honest, by regardless of how mad you get at your motherfucking family, you don't never, ever, 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 ever call no outsider. You'll never call nobody on them. You'll never call nobody else to do nothing about them because I'm going to stand in your chest about it. You understand what I'm saying? I want, I, I want y'all to take that page out of my book because I love everybody in here. Look at my mama. My mama's so motherfucking fly. I love my mama. I love my mama. Look at you. You just made a crazy face when I said that. She is. She is. She is. And you still ain't learned your lesson. Amen. Amen. We thank you for those expressions of love. Amen. And so much has been said that has already eulogized Brother Roland. I want us now to prepare for the final viewing. Our directors are coming. The final viewing is for the immediate family members only. Those immediate family members who want just a few more moments with their loved ones can do so under the direction of our directors and an hour organist is going to come and render song to comfort us. Now the rest of us, I need you to pray. Pray God's comfort and strength on this family. You're now in the hands of the director and our organist.
See, my heart is torn in pieces, but it's my offering. Oh, yeah. So take me to the king. See, the truth is, I'm tired. And my options are few. See, I'm trying to pray. But oh, Lord, where are you? See, I'm all churched out. And I'm hurting, abused. No, I can't fake what's left for me to do. See, the truth is I'm weak. With no strength to fight. No more tears to cry. Even if I try, but oh, still my soul, it refuses to die. No one touch. Yes, it will, it'll change my life. So take me to the king. See, I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. But it's my offering. So lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory, Lord. As I sing to you the song. So take me to the king. Truth is, yes, it's time to stop playing these games. Oh, we need a word, Lord, for your people's pain. So, Lord, speak right now. Cause we're desperate and we're chasing after you. No rules, no religion. And I've made my decision to run to you. Heal that I need So take me to the king I don't have much to bring See my heart is torn in pieces But it's my offering Lay me at the throne Leave me right there alone Gaze, Lord, upon your glory As I sing you the song Yes, Lord, in your way But we keep making the same old mistakes. This glory is not for us. Lord, it's all for you. So take me to the king. Take 
me to the king. Take me to the king. Yeah. You are able to do above all I can ask to think. Take me there. Take me to my king. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. We're ready now for the committal service. Brothers and sisters, we are here witnessing the final earthly chapter in the life of Brother Roland. I say the final earthly chapter because although this chapter ends here on earth, the book is not over for a new chapter begins in eternity. Therefore, seeing as God in his infinite wisdom has decided to call his soul home, we bow in humble submission to his will, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, looking forward to the life to come through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, you're in the hands of our director. Sixteen flower bearers come to the center aisle. Flower bearers come to the center aisle. Please bring your belongings. have a few more flower bearers. Paul bearers, you'll come to my right, your left. A few more flower bearers, a few more flower bearers. The six gentlemen serving as flower, Paul bearers come to my right. This is the way we will go out. We will go out. Paul Bearers will come first, then Brother Roland, then the family. We'll start from the front and work our way to the back, going out from front to back. May we all rise, please. Receive our Paul Bearers. Paul Bearers, we need to we need the center aisle clear, please. We need the center aisle clear. Please remain where you are. Our flower bearers are coming. 
Brother Roland will be next. Brother Roland will be next. Please keep the center aisle clear. Family, you may come at this time. Family, you may come. Beginning at the front, you may leave out beginning at the front and working your way to the back. 